Hello everyone, Studlord here, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of LEGO's new sets for 2024. It's the Family Reunion Celebration. This comes in at 89.99 Great British Pounds or 129.99 US Dollars, which is a little bit of a difference. It means that here in the UK, this is just 4.9 pence per piece, whereas over in the US, it's 7.1 cents, which is still a reasonable price per piece, but noticeably more expensive. The actual build experience putting this together is pretty good. There's not too many fiddly pieces, which means that even if you've got flat sausage fingers like I do, you shouldn't have too much difficulty putting it together even though there are some small elements in there. It comes with 12 bags and two sets of instructions. The second instructions beginning with bag seven, because as this is a modular building, you can have two of you building different parts at the same time, which makes for a nice build experience. And although this is cut away at the back, I don't think it should be too difficult to turn this into a closed modular building if you're wanting to put it into a city set. I imagine you can do it just by buying a second version of these and just making a couple of adjustments to connect it up round at the base plate and also just up at the roof as it's not quite symmetrical, but it shouldn't be too difficult to do. So we'll kick things off at the front and we'll come to the minifigures in just a minute. But the family reunion is taking place in this rather beautiful looking restaurant. We have this little stall outside which is selling peach buns, which is using this new little pink rosebud type element down here. You also have this little food trolley cart, which I've just popped in there for now. This is quite cool. It does go along on its wheels, so you can roll it backwards and forwards, which I must admit I do find overly satisfying for some reason. It's quite fun to play with. Around this side, we've got a colourful little flower stool. I have added in a couple of extra flowers here I had from pieces left over, but the ones that you're just supposed to add in as standard are plenty enough as it is. Nice and colourful round there. And then just coming back round to the front by the doors, we've got this mandarin tree, which I think is supposed to symbolise good luck. I did once have a money tree in real life, but all the leaves fell off, so read into that what you will. You've then got some stickers that you put on the pillars around the doors, which, according to good old Google Translate, which can be rather questionable at times, the one on the left says a hidden dragon rises in the sky, although it does change when I look at it some other times. Uh, the one above the door says new more million or thousands of new updates. And the one on the right says spring returns to the earth and welcomes the return of swallows which sounds a little bit more likely than the other two. You've then got the sticker over on the right. Now, this one says Lockman House and started in 1932. As the 1932 obviously refers to when Lego was founded, I'm not sure if the top part of that is supposed to say Lego House. Alternatively, that did just change then as I looked at it. And that's weird, I swear for a second that actually said Happy New Year. But I'm purely relying on the translator there, so if anybody does actually know what these are supposed to say, please do post in the comments. Also let us know whether LEGO's got it right or whether there's perhaps some questionable translation there. If I spin this round, we can see that we've got a nice little aquarium, which one of our minifigures is walking past at the moment, just here over on the side. And then obviously all the way around the top here that you can particularly see at the sides and the front, We've got these green ingots being used as roof tiles, which works really nicely. You've also got uh, a couple which are just used with normal tiles, I assume because they've supposedly broken, just been repaired, as this is a obviously working restaurant. And then you've got the lovely gold lily pads with frogs on, which just add a wonderful part of the decoration. Overall, I think it looks really fantastic. Just from a, a parts point of view, you do get a lot of gold pieces in this, and also the, uh, the dark greens and reds. So if you wanted to take this and utilise it for any other builds, there are certainly lots of pieces in there that are worthwhile doing that with. Now, as I mentioned, this is modular, so this part can actually slide and lift off. So we're just going to set that over here for the minute. And then we can take a look at our base a little bit more closely. So over here we have a reception area. You walk in through the obviously the opening doors there, that brings you into a reception area. Now, in the reception area, we do have a sticker on the back wall. It's got the little dragon on there, which I think looks quite a bit like the actual Lego dragon. The writing on there, I, again, do not know what that says. So if somebody does know, please do post in the comments. I would like to know. And then behind there, we've also got a little computer screen at the reception desk, which can be used, obviously, for booking people into the restaurant. And then round here we have little flowers on display at the base of our staircase, obviously leading up to the first floor. But then we've also got the kitchen. The kitchen itself is very well laid out. We've got our little minifigure chef here who's got his chopper in his hand. Not sure what that's like for food hygiene, but 
I assume nobody at the restaurant actually minds. We've got a nice little cooking section with saucepans, obviously your chopsticks, and then a very large bird there being uh, ready to cook, who's almost as big as the minifigure themselves. So that's certainly going to feed a large family. And then what we will do is put this back up on here. Try not to knock a little figure off that I've put at the top of the stairs. There we go. So you obviously come up the stairs and that leads us into our main dining area. The roof is held on by just a couple of little studs. So again, that's quite easy to remove. The table is very well laid for our family of six, which is made up of our minifigures that we'll take a little bit of a closer look at later. But you've obviously got mum there, dad rocking out the karaoke machine. You've got granddad uh, photographing our waiter there, most suspiciously. We've got granny down there tending to the flowers. And then we've got the two children. So we've got little boy who's just coming up the stairs here and the little girl who's got a very shocked expression from whatever she's found in the bathroom. Uh, both of those minifigures are holding these little envelopes, which I believe are supposed to be gifts from the grandparents, probably containing money, which is obviously very welcome. But we will take a closer look at those in just a minute. The table itself is laid out with quite a feast containing lots of different noodles and dumplings. And the chairs themselves also work nicely on a sort of rotation basis, although obviously when you do have them set quite closely to the table, once you've got a minifigure sat in them, you can't turn them that much. Obviously, you could move them slightly further away and then you'd be able to, but obviously there's not a huge amount of space in here to actually do that. Nonetheless, it does work quite well and is an overall a nice effect. We've got some more stickers in here. We've obviously got them on the pillars and then we've got a couple of nice sort of stickers on pictures on the walls. The nice stick here in the corner is of a swallow in a cherry blossom tree, which is apparently supposed to symbolise life, death, beauty and violence, as swallows are supposedly good luck charms to do with faith, freedom and prosperity. We've got the sticker on the karaoke machine and then also this one that looks a little bit like a uh, sort of temple in the clouds, might even be sort of the heavenly realms from the monkey kid set, that's what it reminds me of. And then obviously as we come round into the bathroom, I'll just take this little mini figure out of there. We've got some nice gold taps, obviously a sink, little plants, etc. And our door does obviously open and close, although not fully if you put the doorknob on both sides. I just did that for aesthetics. It will close fully if you remove the one on that side. Uh, but then obviously if you do have a minifigure in there for whatever reason, you then can't fully open or close the door. Nonetheless though, it's obviously a nice little room and definitely serves its purpose. Now we will just pop the roof back up on here. So that slides in and then just clicks down with a couple of little studs at the front. And up here we've got a sort of al fresco dining area. Again, we've got more food on display. A couple of diners, one holding a smartphone, which certainly isn't unusual now when you're out dining and another who's being very romantic with flowers. Perhaps that's supposed to be some sort of proposal. And then just over here, we have some fireworks, which you can angle in that little stands ready to go off. And we've obviously got our other minifigure that we'll come to in a minute, who I've just positioned up here for now. But seeing as he's holding one of these peach buns, you could probably just as easily put him down here. Maybe he's just bought one from the stall down there. And one thing I do want to call out, which is really nice, is these lanterns up here. They're very pretty, particularly these ones. So these are printed little mini figureheads in a sort of translucent red. And they've got the printing of a golden dragon on them. That's a really nice little touch. I do like it a lot. Although that does lead me on to a couple of annoying things about this set. First of all, up here we have three of these lanterns hanging off of here, obviously with two of the smaller ones in between, which looks really good. We then come round to the front and for some reason we only get two of the hanging lanterns here, which means that it's not symmetrical, that annoys my OCD greatly, and why Lego couldn't you have just given us one more of these in order to even it out? I'm sure there's probably some strange budgetary reason, but quite frankly, with all of the different stickers and other elements that they've put in this quite impressive set, they really could have just given us one more of these to make it look a whole lot better. Annoying thing number two is that down here in our very well-prepared kitchen, we obviously have a serving hatch, but there is no door for our chef to get in and out of. While that's obviously fine in a cutaway model, anybody who does want to turn this into a closed-in modular is going to have to do it to incorporate a door for him to get in and out of. Otherwise, there's just no physical way that he could possibly be in that room. The annoying thing with doors does also continue up to the bathroom. As I mentioned, when you actually have a minifigure in here, which I do think is quite fun, you can't then open or close the door to get them in or out of. I know that's picky because this obviously is a very compact little set. Very well detailed for what it is, but nonetheless, that is slightly frustrating. 
And then the other thing is this. Now you've got this cool little cart down here, which we're going to be looking at properly with the minifigures in a second, but you've got loose elements. So you've got these little sort of buns or dumplings, whatever they're supposed to be, and they're just loose in there, which means that they fall all over the place when you slightly tilt them wrong. And the same goes for the likes of the noodles that we've got up uh, here being eaten and other elements. Again, I know Lego obviously do this sometimes in different sets, but I just like the fact the whole point of Lego is that they connect together. And when you have loose little elements like this just lying around, they're going to get lost. So that does frustrate me. But there we go. Those are my uh, little bits of a rant over with. And to be honest, if that's all that can be said negatively about this set, then it's not doing too badly at all. So now that we've looked at the set, it's time to move on to the minifigures. And we will begin with the sort of waiting staff at the restaurant. Now, we've got our little waitress slash receptionist here, uh, who's obviously got this pot of tea. Now, she shares the same torso with our waiter dude just here. Both of them are nice torsos. So you've got printing on the back of a sort of silver dragon. It's quite iridescent, so it does shine. Obviously, Year of the Dragon in this set. Really, really nice. Um, unfortunately, the leg printing well, there isn't any, and that's the point. It lets it down. This is the same for all of the minifigures in this set. They all just have uh, very bland, plain legs. There's no dual molding, there's no printing, nothing. And that is a shame. However, they are all unique uh, for one reason or another, and I do very much like the torsos on these ones. There's only the one facial expression on uh, this one. She doesn't have another one. However, our other member of the waiting staff just here, he does have a second expression. He's holding noodles. Now these are loose, so just watch out for that. It can be quite easy to lose those. Um, so he's got this sort of happy expression on that side. And then if I twist his head round, he's got a very happy expression on that side or a sort of <laughs> rather bemused slash going to be sick expression on the other. So not quite sure what he's seen there. He's either walked in on the chef doing something in the kitchen or perhaps he's gone into that bathroom upstairs and seen something that you really didn't want to see you've then got our chef here now he's got a different torso to the others he has got the gold dragon on the back again this is uh, quite iridescent so if i just move it around you'll see it is shiny and he's also got the buttons going down the front there he does only have the one facial expression but doesn't really need any more he's got this lovely little chef's hat as well to go alongside our serving staff minifigures, we've got these two trolleys. So this one is your sort of dessert trolley, which I think is supposed to be inside of the restaurant. This one, I think, is actually supposed to be sort of a food vendor's cart. Um, you've got a little sticker on the back there of like noodles being eaten. Um, I think it's supposed to be a street vendor rather than in the restaurant. Um, having said that, there isn't a set street vendor minifigure. So do with that what you will. It's a nice little accessory nonetheless. Moving on, you have your family of six. So you have the mother. Uh, she's wearing a nice little jumper here and obviously has a mobile phone as an accessory. Um, she just has the one facial expression. So there's nothing on the back there. Nice little hair piece though. That's um, very much like the sort of Rachel hair from Friends. Uh, you then have the dad next to her, and he's getting ready to ball something out on the karaoke machine. He does have a couple of different facial expressions, so he's got his sort of normal one there, and then he's got his eyebrow raised, very Roger Moore-ish, ready to croon out an absolute winner. And he's obviously got a nice little striped jumper there, got a hint of the whole Where's Wally about that to me. But nice little piece, again, obviously... Plain legs, we've already covered that. Moving on, we have the grandparents. Now, our grandmother here, she shares exactly the same torso as the little girl minifigure that we'll be getting to in a moment. Um, she appeared, I believe, first in the Alpine Lodge. Uh, however, she's got new glasses. And obviously, I do really like this little hairpiece. That's very good. She has two facial expressions, one of complete serenity and contentment by the look of it, and the other one of just mild amusement. So she's a nice figure, obviously comes with the flowers as an accessory. And then we've got the grandfather with his camera. Again, Alpine Lodge, but you've got a nice looking jumper slash sweater there nonetheless. And the face comes with new glasses. Uh, pretty little moustache that he's got going on there, but it is just the one expression, nothing on the back. 
Moving on, we have our two children minifigures. Now, both of them come with the same accessory. This is the uh, envelope, which I believe is supposed to be given uh, generally to contain a monetary gift. And it does look good. It's got printing, obviously, of the dragon on there. And that is a printed piece. It's not a sticker. So don't worry, you won't have to try and get a sticker on that small little tile. Our boy here, he comes with uh, just a very simple sort of sweater top. You've got on the back there just a little mountain logo, which does remind me of a certain sports brand. And then the little girl, as we've already mentioned, she shares the same torso with the grandma. Now, facial expression wise, um, she's obviously got this look of absolute shock slash horror. Maybe she's opened up her envelope and found something um, very disappointing monetary wise inside. Alternatively, she can be very happy about what she's got. Uh, little boy, we get him back. He also has a rather sad expression on the back, although it does come with cute freckles. And then he's got that smiley face on the front. Again, freckly looks good and a fun little figure in total. Uh, like the hairpiece, if I get it back on. So overall, those are our family of six and they are nice little minifigures. Definitely good ones to add to the lineup. And most of them could obviously be used in other sets as well. There aren't any here that have got particularly um, you know, torsos that would only go with this set. So they're, they're definitely interchangeable, I would say. Now on to the last four of our minifigures. And these are the other uh, two sort of alfresco diners. And then we've got this lady with her camera on a selfie stick and obviously the dragon costume guy. So let's start with this one just here. So this is our male alfresco diner. First things first, what a cool hair piece. Awesome. Looks very much like my hair and obviously I'm exceptionally handsome. So clearly he's doing something right. Uh, he's just got the one facial expression. That is a very happy one. He's got a nice, cool, printed sort of iridescent torso there. Hopefully you can catch that in the light as I'm twisting it. it does look very good. Uh, obviously the red scarf that goes over it actually covers it a bit, which is a bit of a shame. However, you've got some more printing on the back. You've got another dragon sort of circling around the world. It looks a little bit uh, like a planet there, <clears throat> like Saturn or something, but with a dragon instead of just a, a ring. So that's a really nice bit there. And he comes with this, obviously, flower accessory, the same as Grandma did. So it's the same accessory that you've got there. His uh, dining partner is our little lady here. So she shares the same torso as he does. Uh, it's got the same iridescent printing on both sides, which is very nice. The downside, though, is that unlike him, she has this hair piece. Now, it's nice. The problem is you can't turn her head. She only has the one facial expression, um, but I would like to preferably be able to turn her head to position her, especially when they're up there, obviously, dining. I think that would look quite nice, but you can't because it hits her shoulders. So a little bit of a shame there. She's got the phone accessory that I've just thrown on the floor. So she's got the phone accessory, which is nice. But yeah, again, it is nice to get these figures. They do both share that same torso, but it is a really nice one to have. Uh, it's just cool to have this sort of classic space and dragon mashup that we've got going on. So really good, really nice. Love those two minifigures. Then we have our lady with the selfie stick. Now, there's certainly something going on with these minifigures and phones. We've got one, two, three, three phones on display and a chat with a camera. So they're all very much distracted instead of eating. But they're nice little figures. So this one is cool. She's got two facial expressions and she's got the little sort of uh, mole going on on the side, which is cool. And this very sort of rocker leather jacket. And again, you've got some iridescent printing on the front, which looks really nice. Otherwise, not much to write home about, but she is a good little figure. And again, will blend in well with other sets, not necessarily just this one. Which leads us on to our last figure, who is obviously only going to go really with this set. And it is our dragon costume guy. But boy, does he look good. So we've got a fantastically printed torso. Looks really, really nice. However, I just have to say, the legs don't match. They're not even remotely the same colour. And that spoils it a lot for me. If he's wearing a costume, this should all be the same colour gold. They didn't need to dual mould the legs. They didn't need to print the legs. But come on, Lego. Just get it the same colour at least, it would be so much better. Anyway, that said, um, he's just got the one facial expression. Bit of a shame, however, obviously you do get this amazing sort of dragon headpiece which goes over the top. So that does make up for it. And then you've got this sort of peach bun here, slash 
pink rosebud. It just looks like a rosebud to me, which he's holding in his hand, assuming that he's just bought that from the vendor outside. But yeah, nice little minifigure as well. So that's all 13 and we do have a nice collection of them. So overall, size wise, this is a pretty small building. It certainly pales in comparison next to say the Natural History Museum, which is definitely a much larger size. It's also smaller than the likes of the Hocus Pocus House of the Sanderson Sisters. In fact, it's definitely one of the smallest modular buildings that I would say that we've got recently. However, it is also beautifully detailed. Now it goes pretty well size wise with our other set of the new year, which was the Auspicious Dragon. I did a review for that as well. Check out the video, I'll put the link in the description below. And the two go very nicely together. But overall, what do I think of this set? Is everything about it awesome? Is it good? Is it average? Is it a bit of a dud or should it be avoided like the plague? Well, I would say that overall it is good. There's definitely some things about it that I would improve upon if I could. Nonetheless, it is a very beautiful little set and one that I'll happily have on display. If you're in the UK, I would say snap this up. Even at retail price, it is very good on a per piece price count. If you're in America, then I would say wait until it's on sale or at least a double points day. That'll make it just that little bit better value for money. All this though is of course just my opinion. Please post in the comments below what you think. Have you got this set? Are you gonna get it? And please consider liking and subscribing. For now though, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.